I'm going to speak about how to plan a carbohydrate, low carbohydrate diet in the Indian scenario. And we all know, I think this is something that we've seen time and again, we keep talking about it and we have enough evidence to show that yes, India eats a lot of carbs. We are protein deficient. Also, the quality of carbs is a concern in our country. So we are a carb loving country, like Dr. Mishra said. And we know that a high carbohydrate diet from the pure study has clearly shown its association with mortality risk. And where fat was considered a villain in the past today, uh, you know, people are wondering whether is carb the villain and is uh, should we go on a carb free diet, especially in a person with diabetes. Now, in spite of all the education and everything else that we are doing to spread awareness about uh, nutrition, about lifestyle modification, about diabetes education, we still have a large number of people in our country who are uncontrolled. In fact, uh, the ICMR and DAP study has clearly shown that our population has an HbA1c between 8 to 9%, which is much higher than the desired target range. And if you see that the contribution of the HbA1c is mostly from your postprandial blood glucose levels and we are constantly in a postprandial blood glucose state because we are constantly eating and our meals, as, including our snacks, are very high in carbohydrates which are increasing the post-meal blood glucose uh, uh, values. And therefore, the high carbohydrate consumption is definitely associated with high postprandial values. And here is where nutrition and lifestyle modification plays a very, very key role. And planning, a, you know, or designing a meal plan which is moderate in carbs will definitely help. Now, the biggest challenge, even when we take dietary recalls of our patients, especially even children. And today, in fact, in the pandemic, we have seen a large number of children with type 2 diabetes and obesity and insulin resistance, PCOS, hypothyroidism, all these numbers are definitely on the rise. And therefore, if you look at the kind of snacks that we eat, uh, even our dinners have been replaced by snacks, especially from the part of the country that I am in, the western part of the uh, of India. Uh, the dinners are usually a snacky meal, like it could be a pav bhaji or it could be a seb puri or it can be a sandwich. And if you see that they are very high, in, one is refined carbs, secondly is the amount of fat content, the sodium content and also the snacks mid-meal snacks, whether it is between breakfast and lunch or between lunch and dinner, typically is a packet of biscuits or it could be some, uh, you know, packaged item like a chuda or, you know, they think that diet food means it is carbohydrate free, not realizing that even ragi chips are going to be high in carbohydrate as well as high in, uh, you know, sodium, even though if it is roasted. And therefore, very important is to look at what is the diet that needs to be given. Uh, initially, you know, some years back, especially when I started my practice 20, 22 years back, we had a general diabetic diet. Everybody was given the same meal plan, no matter from which part of the country they came from. So it was a 1200, 1400, 1600, 1800 calorie plan. And we just put the numbers in the plan. It was cyclo style sheets. The list of no's was more than the list of allowed foods. And therefore, people used to ask us, Madam, should we eat this before food or after food? Because there's a very small list of what to eat. And usually everything went in the uh, avoid all the restricted food items. There were no follow-ups. People really didn't come to us for a follow-up and therefore we did not know whether are they following the diet, what is happening to them, how is their HbA1c improving. They did go to the doctor, that also not on a regular basis, but a follow-up to the dietitian was very poor and it was a one-size-fits-all. Today, it's no longer a diabetic diet. Everybody in the family is encouraged to eat a healthy eating plan. Therefore, otherwise it becomes a big problem for the woman of the family to cook separately for in-laws, separately for the spouse and separately for the children. And if she has diabetes, it becomes even more challenging because she's not able to follow anything because it's becoming too much for her to anyway satisfy the, uh, you know, the demands in terms of food of everybody else in the family. It's not a one size fits all because today you have people on different medication, different kinds of insulins, and therefore it has to be a customized. And when I say design a meal plan, it does not mean including a lot of exotic, expensive foods. It has to be also affordable, especially in today's scenario. It has to be flexible because you have to plan. And even the ADA guidelines clearly state that there is no fixed or there is no fixed ratio of carbohydrate, protein and fat. And you decide what is best for your patient. It definitely has to be personalized. Again, India is very diverse in our food habits. North eats very different to South, East eats very different to West. And therefore, a person from East India has to be given a meal plan, which he's used to eating because that is easily implementable as well as it is sustainable in the long run. Because that is a basic challenge that we encounter. Compliance to following the meal plan and therefore sustainability is a big issue in our country. 
And this uh, study by Sarah Sittleman has clearly showed that a very high carbohydrate diet as well as a very low carbohydrate diet, both are not desirable. And therefore, achieving a good uh, carbohydrate, moderate carbohydrate amount of say 45 to 50% or as per the study shows that 50 to 55% is associated with the lowest mortality risk. And even in our clinical practice, we have seen that moderating carbs to around 50% Improving the quality of carbs, including protein in the diet, definitely helps. And therefore, today, the new concept of culinary science has come because people are fearing food. You know, they have looking at food as with fear and we don't want them to do that. We want them to enjoy food, enjoy a good quality of life of living with diabetes and living well with diabetes while they are enjoying different varieties of food, especially what they are bought up eating or what they are grown eating. Bring back the joy of eating and living with diabetes. Definitely focus on quality and quantity. Sometimes people tell us that noodles, uh, you know, if I'm eating a noodle packet, which is going to give me, say, 200 to 300 calories versus eating my chapati bhaji, which gives me 200 calories. What is the difference? I can still eat noodles because at this time I'm controlling my caloric intake. But what is the quality of calories I'm consuming? Here I'm eating something which is from whole wheat, which has got fiber, it's got the essential nutrients. Whereas when I'm eating a noodle made out of, you know, maida or refined flour, my quality of carbs is definitely lower and it does not have any fiber. Reinforcing Indian traditional dietary practices and we just recently had a paper published in the nutrients on this where even if you look at East India whether it's panta bhat or pakala which is a very commonly consumed item in uh, you know eastern part of India it itself offers a lot of nutritional benefits especially when we're talking about improving gut health and prebiotics and probiotics in the diet. Now definitely we need to look at lowering the carbs so therefore reduce the carbs where the start study has shown that Indians consume around 65 to 70 percent of calories coming from carbs. Even if we are able to moderate it to around 45 to 50 percent, we can achieve a good glycemic control. Improve the quality of carbs, definitely increase the fiber to 20 grams per thousand calories. Include lentil carbs, resistant starch food rich foods, reduce the calories if the person is overweight uh, and reduce the consumption of processed and packaged foods. While we are doing that, improve the quality as well as quantity of protein because the protein definitely is a concern in our country. Even if we are non-vegetarian population, we have seen that protein, uh, you know, the amount of protein that we consume is definitely lower. And where fat was vilified in the past, today we are talking about including good quality fats in the diet, which is going to help in improving the heart health as well as improve the glycemic index of the meal. Now, this is the exchange list that we follow and this is from the IFCT 2017 data. And if you look, 30 grams of cereals gives you roughly around 15 grams of carbs. Now, why I'm saying this is a lot of people think that ragi or, you know, bajra or jawar is very good for people with diabetes. But what they need to understand is if I'm going to take 30 grams of any cereal or millet, it is going to give me around 22.5 grams of carbs. Whereas for the same amount of pulses, I get 15 grams of carbs. So the carbs is lower, whereas the protein content goes up. Soya bean is very, very good in terms of, you know, having low amount of carbs, but having good amount of protein. But very important is the way we cook soya bean because it also has got certain goitrogenic compounds. And similarly, if you look at vegetables, especially when we tell them to eat a vegetable, they will eat a starchy vegetable. Like it could be potato or it could be arbi or it could be yam which is going to have far more higher amount of carbohydrate compared to your green leafy vegetables and your gourd vegetables. And therefore, it's very important to specify that when we are talking about making one fourth of our plate cereals, that also includes millets as well as starchy vegetables because they will give or they will contribute to carbs. Now, nuts are a good inclusion in a person with diabetes because they have good MUFA fats. Some of them have good omega-3 fats as well as they have essential micronutrients. And if you look at the carbohydrate content, 15 grams of nuts gives me only 0.4 grams of carbohydrate. And therefore, we can replace our snacks, especially, you know, the biscuits that people eat. And people buy oats biscuits or ragi biscuits because they think it is diabetes friendly. But if you look at the food label, there is only 6 to 10 percent of you know oats or it could be 6 to 10 percent of ragi and the remaining is all your refined flour sodium it's got preservatives and people end up eating the entire packet of biscuits because they feel that biscuits if it is a diet biscuit it is very good for health and then their blood glucose levels are on hitting the roof sugar and jaggery has the same amount of carbs a lot of people think that jaggery or honey has got lesser amount of carbs compared to sugar 
but in terms of the carbs for the amount it has the similar amount of your carbs now fats are definitely having no carbs and as well as your non veg foods so if you include chicken fish or eggs it has got zero carbs but also very important is to look at the amount of saturated fat in the diet and therefore everything in moderation is recommended definitely when we're looking at carbs you also have to look at the glycemic index as well as the glycemic load because foods which low with low glycemic index and glycemic load have shown to improve your metabolic risk profile and just following the plate method i think this has made it very simple for us dietitians to improve our counseling skills especially and com get compliance from patients because you take a 9 inch plate you fill half your plate with non starchy vegetables one fourth of your plate with protein and one fourth of your plate with cereal millets and starchy vegetables it becomes very simple to implement and this is the best way of moderating carbs in the diet also about including fiber as well as protein in the diet and this should be replicated at each meal whether it is your breakfast whether it is your lunch whether it is your dinner and it is very possible with our indian traditional meals you do not have to cook something very exotic or elaborate very simple our indian meals are able to you know we are able to achieve the moderation in terms of carbs improve the quality and quantity of protein as well as fiber in the diet now when we are looking at chapati okay and this is from a study done by dr v mohan steam where they've taken 2 kg whole wheat flour and added roasted bengal gram flour and as i showed you the 30 grams of roasted bengal gram flour will give you 15 grams of carbs they've added isab gul husk and demitter bittered methi powder and by just doing this one is you moderate the amount of carbs you improve the quality of protein and quantity of protein you add fiber as well as you reduce the glycemic index of the roti and this is something that can be done by the entire family not necessary by only somebody who is having diabetes and there is no necessity of buying a diabetic atta which is going to be more expensive to your regular flour this is something that can be done in the house food order is another very important study and this is a beautiful study done by dr alpana shukla who's been a very good friend of mine and uh, we worked together 20 years back and where you include where you start the meal with salad and protein so you start your meal with salad and then you add uh, you know either curd or paneer or egg depending on whatever protein is in the uh, plate and you start your meal with that and then follow up with your roti or your rice and your vegetables and by doing this you improve the post prandial blood glucose response there's better satiety achieved as well as including protein and fiber in the meal and this is something which is very easy for us to explain to the patients and get compliance now we are all doing everything virtually so put on your mask i'm going to take you on a virtual tour of india and talk about certain foods you know which we eat in our daily practice so while chura dahi is a very popularly consumed item especially in eastern part of india and people love it and we know that beaten rice flakes has got a higher glycemic index and we do see an increase in blood glucose but that doesn't mean we tell people do not eat it what we do is you take more amount of your curd you take lesser amount of your beaten rice you add some nuts to it you add some seeds to it automatically you are improving the protein you are adding fresh fruits as well as you are adding some amount of nuts which is going to give you the healthy carbs and you are reducing the amount of carbs in the diet now this is from especially it's eaten i think poha or beaten rice is eaten in all parts of india in different forms now this is your poha usually in the part of india that i am from they add potato to it so automatically the carb content goes up as well as the gi also goes up now there is a very popular item in the western part of india and especially in maharashtrians that we eat is called your dadpe pohe where you take the poha you add a lot of vegetables you can add some roasted peanuts and you squeeze lime automatically the gi goes down you've reduced the carbs you've improved the amount of fiber as well as protein along with healthy fats so where people used to get scared of having roasted peanuts today uh, we are including roasted peanuts because one is it is economical secondly it's a good source of mu for fats as well as it is also lower in carbs but everything in moderation even when they increasing the amount of fat it has to be as per the recommended amounts now aloo paratha especially if i'm from the northern part of india and paratha as of please say that you know you have to moderate even your breakfast and please control the amount of carbs as well as the quality of carbs that you're consuming at breakfast so aloo paratha you can actually make it into a vegetable paratha add some paneer stuffing you can add some dal to the paratha automatically you improve the protein and you have it with curd so one is you will eat lesser as well as you've added fiber and you've added protein to the meal so this becomes very simple because you're still giving them a paratha you're just modifying it 
to suit their requirement and they are per the person is also very happy the family is happy because everybody can still continue eating the same thing you are not introducing them to oats or muesli or something which they are not used to eating from childhood now south india when you are looking at idli and typically we we'll see people will eat four idlis or they'll have two dosas which will be very high in carbs as well as the gi is very high because they are fermented foods so what i do here is i take two idlis I add sambar with lot of vegetables and I have it with the coconut chutney. So one is it will give me good satiety. The carb content definitely goes down. My protein con quantity goes up, and I'm adding vegetables and I'm also increasing the amount of fiber in the diet. So this will give more satiety to the person as well as he's still going to enjoy his idli, which he is, which he loves. Now when we look at dosa, the same thing. You can convert your rice based dosa to a pulse based dosa so you can have like a pesar atu which is very commonly consumed in hyderabad or telangana this is something where they eat on a regular basis so you make a pulse based dosa or you can make a chilla or a pudla it's known by different names in different parts of india but it means the same thing one is you get the carbs you get the protein as well as you get the healthy fats and remember um, this is something that is important because people think dals are only protein and they don't have carbs and they do not actually bolus for it especially if they are on insulin they have to know that dals will also give you carbohydrate rajma rice this is my last slide again the same thing people i think all over including children love rajma with rice so instead of taking the rice first and heaping it you know with rice your plate with rice and taking less amount of rajma and then you know uh, having your post prandial blood glucose go up you take rajma you take a small portion of rice and you add salad to it automatically you will you achieve the satiety you moderated the carbs you've included lente carbs and you've included fiber in the diet so it's very very simple and it's important like dr uh, you know sharma said that you have to consult a qualified doctor similarly for the diet you have to consult a qualified dietitian because she's not going to starve you she's not going to give you expensive exotic foods but give you your traditional foods and make it more diabetes friendly and therefore if you look at different parts of india wherever you come from you can achieve a good diabetes friendly meal by just doing some amount of moderation in the meal and this is all of india most of the meals that are there whether it's a sambar rice or your dal dhokli pakala bhat you know that's something which is my favorite and uh, they can all become diabetes friendly so very important to summarize it has to be supervised it has to be simple sustainable i think most important is affordable and our traditional indian diets with slight slight modification can become diabetes friendly and it's not a one size fits all it has to be personalized so thank you so much for your patient hearing all that i have spoken is in my book diet and diabetes simplified thank you